Hi there. Today I'm going to do another commonplace drawing. I have my assortment of paint brushes. My pencils. These are watercolor pencils and my Stabilo pencil. My Biggie Stabilo pencils. My black Magic Higgins ink. What I like about this is that it is waterproof. I have an assortment of ink pens and markers and pencils. I have my ink tents, which I am starting to lean very heavily again on my ink tents blocks on these drawings. Here again, because once they're dry, they are set. And I do like that about the ink tents blocks. Something that I'm going to experiment with today is I mix, this is just an extra glycerin bottle. I used up the glycerin, kept the bottle. I mixed up some of this eye dye. I've been experimenting with making spray inks with eye dye. Now, I'm not, this is not spray, and I'm not intending to spray it today. I'm intending to use it on my background, and you will see that when I get into that. Here's the package. Of, it's by Jacquard. It's eye dye. Here's a blue one that I have not mixed up and a yellow one. This cost me approximately $3.75. Now, there's a video, and I'll put a link to it in the description box below. Rosemary Morris put out a video where she's using Ukrainian egg dye, and she says her colors are very vibrant. And I don't know if I'm just picking the less vibrant colors or not, but for these colors, I do not find them that vibrant. Maybe I need to mix it up with 16 ounces. That's still a good price, $4 for 16 ounces. This is 32 ounces. I have so many little bottles of this. <laughs> this is six fluid ounces. I've got five, almost five bottles of gunmetal gray dye. <laughs> You've seen me use it, but what I do like about it is, here again, if you use it as a medium, it's a liquid, it's liquid, and you use it, I'll probably use it like a watercolor. A premixed watercolor, but and it is movable, but once it dries, it's dry, it's permanent. I would recommend that if you use your hands instead of a brush, that you would use gloves if you're going to use, like, say, I got a sponge and just started sponging it on. I would probably want to get a pair of plastic gloves to use it. Here, I'm going to use a brush on my page to apply it. So I'm not too worried about putting gloves on. Um, but when I mix up these packages, I think that I'm going to mix them up in 16-ounce batches and see if the less water, the more dye, if I get a more vibrant color. I'm still experimenting with this. There is a wide range of colors on the, on the shelf where, at the art store where I bought these. So I thought I would try a few and see if I liked it. And if I do, I'll probably buy more. I think it's a, a really good value. It, this is recommended for fabric. This one is vibrant color for all natural fabrics, silk, cotton, linen, and rayon. For polyester and nylon, use I dye poly. So they sell two different brands for dyeing on fabric. Now right now, I'm not going, I'm going to use watercolor paper. That's my intended use for this. And I'm just going to apply it to the background. And I will say that I'm going to hold it for last because I want my drawing to be finished. And then I'm going to apply it somehow in the background. Probably just brush it on in various strokes. I think that if you do it, if you do do that, you have to be very conscious about where you're putting those marks because those marks are going to be permanent. It's like drawing in ink. What I'm going to draw today are clothespins. Now, I would say that clothespins are probably not so commonplace in our world today. <laughs> they were commonplace in the last century when you had outside clotheslines. Even though it is not so common in today's world... I do like the shape of them, and I think they'll be fun to sketch. So let's get started. I am going to go into fast motion, and you can watch. <laughs> 